Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm Shelly. I'm currently a fourth year medical student and you may have noticed that I've taken a two month hiatus in December and January because I was a bit busy completing my residency interviews. Speaking of which is today's topic. So let's get into it. residency interview season this year, of course everyone was saying how different the experience was going to be. But as a fourth year, going into this for the first time, it's not like I knew how things were going to be, even if they were in person this year. So everything was going to be new for me, whether it required me to book a number of plane tickets or whether it was going to be all on Zoom. The only major difference would be that the advice from prior years, um, aka from current interns, wouldn't always be applicable. Although most of the general advice, I believe, still holds true with regards to choosing programs. Now, having completed the season of interviews, here are my four areas I would suggest you do your research on regarding each program you're applying to and ask about during your interview day. What I mean by atmosphere of the program is really getting to know how the residents in the program relate to each other. What do they do to support each other? Are they friendly and open to covering for each other? And is there an overall sense of collegiality? You may also want to find out what their interests are outside of the hospital to see if there'll be common activities you can do together during your rest days. Remember, you'll be spending 80% of your time during your years of residency with your fellow residents, so you definitely want to know if you'll feel comfortable, supported, and most importantly, yourself during this time. This also ties into how the relationships build up between the residents and attendings. Residency is the time where you will be directly learning from your attendings, whether it be how to streamline diagnostic algorithms, communication skills, or surgical skills. It's important that you find out what the dynamics are between teacher and student. You want to ask whether or not residents feel comfortable asking questions. Whether or not residents feel what they're being taught is evidence-based and up-to-date, and whether there is good balance of autonomy and guidance. You may also be interested in learning how feedback is given and if residents ever feel intimidated or whether they feel supported even through bad outcomes. Now, what I mean by career is asking yourself what you see yourself doing post-residency and three to five years after that. It's okay not to know exactly what it is you'll be doing but having a general idea really helps in determining which program is best for you. Do you see yourself seeing patients in a large academic research institution, or rather you see yourself serving patients at a smaller community hospital, or rather yet you might see yourself in private practice, and having private practice attendings at your program may be beneficial to you in gaining exposure on how to open your own clinic. Are you interested in working with underserved and or under-resourced community in inner cities or rural towns? Or do you see yourself working with more affluent populations in the city or suburbs? You may also be interested in learning another language during residency if you have a specific population you want to serve in mind. Another question to consider is whether you're interested in pursuing fellowship post-residency. If so, training at programs that offer fellowships will be helpful. Furthermore, you may even see yourself moving towards public health or tech-focused work in the healthcare industry, where you'll be making a difference not patient to patient, but on population scales. These and more are all paths that you can choose to take post-residency, and knowing which general direction you'd like to head in will help direct the questions you ask during your interviews. Location may be overlooked sometimes, but very important to factor into your decision making as well. If you're single and don't have pressures from family to stay nearby, you'll have more flexibility here. 
On the other hand, if you have a partner whose job is tied to certain areas or have family that you're responsible to take care of, you may be more limited in areas you can choose from. Aside from that, you also want to determine if the location of the hospitals and the population you're working with aligns with your career trajectory that we discussed prior. You also want to determine if your quality of life will be significantly worsened or enhanced in each place you work at. For instance, you may feel more at home where there is nature and trails you can hike on your days off. Or you may feel more at home if there's a Starbucks every few hundred feet. You also want to take into consideration whether having a car is feasible for you and ask if one is needed during your residency. Other important considerations include cost of rent, cost of home ownership, and general cost of living in the areas you're looking at. Now, lower down on priority, but may also be a good thing to think about, is whether this area is a place you'd like to live long term. It's true that you can find an attending position in a different part of a country, but it doesn't hurt to already be in the area you'd like to find a post-residency job, where you may be able to network more and also have built roots already. Again, this all depends on your career trajectory, so knowing the direction you'd like to head in really, really helps in finding the best program for you. Last but not least is the residency program's educational curriculum. As mentioned previously, residency is the time period where you will be learning the bulk of knowledge and skills towards becoming a doctor. It's important to acquaint yourself with the program's lecture series, topics covered during grand rounds, and any special program that the residency has incorporated to broaden the resident's exposure to either pathology or special patient needs. You want a lecture series that encompasses all of the specialty you're going into, and added programs that help you gain more exposure to specific needs of your patients or new pathologies is always a positive. Learn about the frontiers that your specialty is facing and see if your program addresses these issues as well. Now, general thoughts of how virtual interviews were. I have to say the pros were that I didn't have to spend so much money on travel and we were able to save on time since we didn't have to spend two days on one program. Usually you would have a resident gathering or a mixer the evening before where you'd go out to a restaurant and get to know more about the program and the residents in an informal setting and then reserve the entire next day for the interview. So in that sense, we were all able to participate in more interviews since Zoom interviews usually lasted half a day at most and a lot of people had schedules where they were able to schedule one morning interview and one afternoon interview. Now that being said, the cons were that because we didn't have the in-person experience, we missed out on getting to know the residents more at the gatherings, and we also missed the in-person experience of touring the hospitals. Some programs provided video recordings of the hospitals, but it doesn't quite equal the experience of walking through the halls of a hospital and maybe getting in a few conversations with the nurses and talking to all the residents in person. So I feel like the cons are definitely there and make it a bit harder to rank the programs. And it's especially true when you get a lot of people advising you to go with your gut feeling, but it's harder to get a gut feeling from Zoom meetings. So I'd say there are definitely positives with significant negatives as well. I ended up driving to a few of the locations during my time off just to get a feel for the neighborhood in town. And I think it's definitely worth it to do it for your top three to five programs if it's feasible to travel there. So those are my thoughts and tips for residency interviews this year. Of course, I hope when you're watching this, you'll be booking flights and Airbnbs for in-person interviews again. But I think the tips on what categories of information you want to find out from each program will hold true for many years to come. Thanks for coming on this journey with me, and I'll see you in the next one.